All right, let's continue now hearing some wonderful memories and thoughts and tributes uh, to the late Archbishop Desmond Mpilo Tutu. I'm joined now by a retired reverend and photojournalist, Colin Uester. Colin, thank you so much uh, for coming through to our studio. And you have some uh, very special memories of a particular incident that happened in 1989 on some of our, at that time, whites-only beaches. It was a protest led by the Archbishop. Tell us about it. Yeah, I'm, uh, if you don't mind, I would just like to, to, to say that um, with all the tributes that has been coming in and uh, all the um, accolades that have been paid to, to the Bishop, to the Archbishop, I don't think we will get anywhere near um, the dynamics that governs the very specifics of this man as a man of God and we are all children of God um, but he was special in so many ways uh, multi-dimensional in, uh, in his characteristics he could make you laugh you, in fact I would hear the man laugh and I didn't know what he was laughing about but I would laugh for long <laughs> you would see him cry and you wouldn't know what he's crying about you would cry long on that particular day, um, when we did the march or the surf walk, the bishop invited, the archbishop invited everyone with black feet and, 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 and also those with smelly feet that hadn't been washed for a long time <laughs> would, were welcome to come along to walk on the beach at, at Gordon's Bay, which was reserved for whites only at the time. And um, amazingly that the, the the government of the time were fearful that the black on our skins would come off with rub off on the on the beaches, and it would it would uh, turn their white sands into black sand, and their blue waters would be in, will turn into black waters. They tried everything in the book to keep us off the beach. They came in with helicopters. They came in with armored cars. They came in. They br brought out the armies. The police, every police van was out there. And all we were armed with were our black smelly feet. <laughs> and the Archbishop, I understand, was, was carried on the shoulders of the protesters. Uh, and, and he said it's, it's astonishing that these people are here just to have a picnic. Absolutely. And you're coming with your guns. It was a violent day, wasn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. They came with their loud hailers. They said, please stay off the beach. And anyway, what I want to say is that um, we got onto the beach. Uh, I was one of um, a number of, of, of newspaper uh, journalists and photographers. Sadly, a number of them, or most of them, had passed on. And I, I felt that I owed it to them. I owed it to them. I have a book which is called, uh, which will be launched next month, and we'll meet again then on that I'm book. I'm sure we will. It's called Se Chaba Sa, South Africa. And uh, the march, the beach surf walk, features in that book. Um, yeah, that was quite a few, a number of people died on that day also. Um, of, of, in, the, in the book, it, it records the, the pick-up points, etc., etc., etc. What I want to say to you is that one of my daughters had the privilege of worshipping with the Archbishop in the church where he went to, to, to worship after he retired in Milneton. And she said what struck her was the fact that this highly esteemed man of God he would, as he entered the church, from the back he would go into every pew and he would greet every parishioner by hand and he would look them in the eye and they belonged to him and he belonged to them for that moment until he got to his seat in the front. That was the one what's name. And then I have memories of him at the University of the Western Cape because I was, I was tasked to do all the graduations for the newspapers. I was a freelance photojournalist. So I would, you know, uh, syndicate my photographs to, to the old spectrum and uh, after every graduation the <laughs> the Archbishop would say in Afrikaans here the grade plechtigheid is verdag do you understand Afrikaans? Uh, I do but I don't quite understand that verdag means it's, it's suspect <laughs> so you as academics I don't know if this is really was a real uh, uh, graduation ceremony, this graduation ceremony is suspect. What did he mean? Why did he it's say that? suspect. I mean, are you, are you, are you, are you uh, uh, academically qualified to, 
to send these people into the into the community as doctors and professors and lawyers and whatever. So that is what it meant. And of course, you had everybody in stitches. Okay. Well, I mean, this is the thing. His laughter, yeah. it's astonishing how we, we read that his, his laughter often diffused very tense situations, even going into dangerous situations. You talk about the surf walk uh, that ended in bloodshed, and it was a very uh, dangerous um, plan. I mean, it's, it's, it's insane. It, you know, if we think about it's just. A group of people who wanted to go and have a picnic. Yeah. You know, this this man um, came at at a time, at a time. Of, uh, he, he was he was a man for all seasons, for all people. He was ordained by the Anglican Church for the Anglican uh, for the Anglican Church, but he was a man for every church, for every church. I don't belong to his church, but really, he was a man for everyone. And um, he really taught us how to recalibrate our lives uh, and, and, to, and to, 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 to throw off the shackles of apartheid. And um, my son likes to, 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 to tell me, he's now in Saudi Arabia, he likes to tell me, Dad, you must rid yourself, free yourself of, of the mentality of the colonialist and, and, and um, being imprisoned by that which was... Uh, forced upon you during the time of segregation and apartheid and things like that. So this man came and he really showed us how to recalibrate your lives mm. and how to free yourselves and how to, 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 to be human and to know that you are also a child of God. He said something and I think someone uh, uh, referred to it yesterday that even those people who oppressed us are also children of God and I really have my I don't think the same DNA that flows in the veins of God flows in those people, but he says we must forgive. Yeah, compassion <laughs> and forgiveness, uh, I mean, two, two very strong characteristics. I want to go back to that protest because I think it's such an interesting time in our history and our transition out of apartheid. It was August 1989. We know that from 1990 this, the changes came quickly uh, it, and yet it was such a terrible moment just before all those changes. Um, Archbishop Tutu was known for being a man of hope and he always said that I will never give up hope even when things look very bleak. And, and many people were, were worried that we would never see the back of apartheid. But he continued to hope. Do you think that protests like that, when you look back now, started or con just chipped away at that belief uh, that the apartheid leaders had that they could prevail. Abs absolutely, absolutely. Um, uh, was it was it Zuma who said, "We will be the ANC will be in power until Jesus comes." He said, and I think that was the perception of the old uh, racist regime. Uh, the handful I always call them the handful of white racist bandits that held us at gunpoint for all those years and 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 bereft the country of of its wealth and left us impoverished and poor and gave us cutty education and things like that i'm, I'm still filled with a lot of anger uh, uh, and it, it comes through even in in my writings um, i am published as as a, as a poet and, and writer uh, uh, nationally and internationally but this will be my first uh, solo anthology so you must please come <laughs> and um and I'm trying to, to actually get away from that, but I think at the age of 40, I was allowed to go and make my cross. And I, I, I couldn't even hold onto the pen because uh, it, it looked like a child had just started to write now. I had to make a cross. So people ask me, what time did you pass? I'm telling, I, I, I passed ABC. <laughs> I passed ABC because I couldn't even make it's the cross. a powerful moment. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, um, when I think of, of Bishop Tutu, uh, 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 the way he interacted with my son at those graduations. He was a little kabouter, he always ran, ran off with me to these graduations. <laughs> and with everybody else, anybody and everybody, really at the top end of, of, of the spectrum and at the lowest end of the spectrum, he was just a man at any time of the day, in the night. He, ne he never seemed to have had a bad moment until that moment when he broke down and he cried mm -hmm. at the TRC. Um, yeah, so he also taught me how to pray. He one day he said, um, there are times when we, um, we feel that we pray to God and we ask we have a problem and, and nothing happens and we've prayed for years and nothing happens. And he said, just say the few following words, 
Lord, I just called to say I love you. <laughs> and I'm quoting him now. Lord, I just called to say I love you. I just called to say how much I care. Uh, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart. I thought, what a simple, easy prayer for a child, for anyone, whether you're rich or poor, whether you are a believer or unbeliever, just call to say, I love you. This is this man. You said at the beginning of the interview that he's such a multifaceted man. It's very difficult to actually get the sum of him. But if I had to ask you uh, to, to list just one characteristic that has had the biggest impact on you personally, what would it be? The humility of the man, the absolute humility and the genuineness. You know, there are times when we, we have leaders uh, in every facet of life. Uh, you have leaders and uh, they are there for that moment. You know, they're very nice to you for that moment because the cameras are on them, the newspaper is there, and it matters to them what that person or those people think when they stand in front of an audience and they address the audience. They have to make an impression. But this man wasn't out to make an impression on anybody. Uh, the ordinary man in the street, he would make, he would go there and spend quality time with that man, genuinely quality. And you could feel that here was someone in your, in your presence. And he would walk away and he would never perhaps meet that person again. He knows that that person won't go to someone that could open a door for him, for, for, for Bishop Tutu. Uh, um, and this was, this was what attracted me to the man. He, he was just a junior, and that type of characteristic is, is very few and far between. You don't find it there nowadays anymore. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing your memories. We yeah. really appreciate it. Thank yeah. you for coming in. <laughs> Thank you so much, and I hope we meet again. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Colin Neuster is a retired minister. He's also a photojournalist, and he joined Archbishop Desmond Tutu on what they called the surf walk in 1989 to protest over the whites-only beaches.